All right, so um, I just have a few thoughts that I wanted to share as we typically do. First of all, um, as I said before, I'm really happy that you guys have decided to share Easter uh, here at our place. It means a lot to me. And uh, obviously, um, you know, Easter means a lot of different things to different people. Some people think of Easter bunnies and colored eggs, and um, I think of chocolate mostly. Um, but um, obviously, Easter has a pretty profound uh, meaning for people of faith. And you don't have to necessarily be a person of faith to think about Easter in the way that I'm going to share it today. But when you think about what Easter represents, I think whether you're a person of faith and you believe in God or you don't believe in God, it doesn't make any difference. Um, the principles of Easter, I think, can be practically applied to anybody's life. When you think about Easter, you know, there's a couple different components to it. One is uh, what they call Good Friday. And, of course, Sunday is what they call Resurrection Sunday, which is tomorrow, which hasn't happened yet. Um, but when you think of the pieces and parts of that and what it represents, I think it's pretty profound if you try to apply that to your life in principle. If you think about Good Friday, it almost doesn't make much sense because Good Friday actually represents a very tragic and very terrible end to a person that we know as Jesus. Those of you that believe in Jesus, those of you that don't, bear with the story, and hopefully it'll have some meaning to you. But the point of the death of Christ has a lot of different components to it. Number one, Jesus came to the earth uh, and lived as we lived, and Good Friday is one of those days that represents, in my mind, what all of us, I think you would agree, that Living as a human being on this earth, no matter what walk of life you come from, there is going to be some suffering. There's going to be some things that happen in your life that are tragic, things that you can't stand, things that you would just soon forget that they ever occurred. There's good things and bad things, but suffering is a natural part of humanity. And Jesus represents the ultimate of suffering that anybody could have ever endured. I would think, I mean, you imagine Jesus... His closest friends, he has 12 disciples around him, every one of them abandoned him on that day, right? Now you can apply that to your own life. If you had friends or people that disrespected you and maybe cut you out of their life, right? That happened to Christ on Good Friday. Every one of the 12 disciples, his closest friends, didn't want anything to do with him. You got to feel pretty sad on that day. We call it Good Friday, but it, it represents suffering more than anything. And then the people that he came to be the Messiah for, the Jewish nation, it had been prophesied that a Messiah would come for 400 years. These Jewish people are waiting for 400 years for this guy to come. And when he comes, they kill him. <laughs> I mean, you could not have a better day. I mean, that's the worst day of life. When your own people that you came to be the Messiah, the representative of Christ for, don't even recognize who you are, and they participate in your death. And then you add on top of that, that the Roman people who were oppressing the Jewish nation beat him to a place that most of us cannot even fathom in our mind. Now, even if you don't believe in that, just understand, even in story form, that that represents the suffering of all suffering of all suffering. It is the worst of things that anyone could endure. That's what Good Friday represents. And it sounds like a really sad story, but the reality is... The two days later on Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, represents the antithesis of that. That even in human suffering, even in the worst things that you will experience in life, that there's a way through. That two days later it gets better. That you can rise above no matter what tragedy that you've had in your life, no matter what failure you've ever experienced, you can actually overcome it. Because that's what resurrection is, rising above it, rising from death to life and having life anew. But more profound than that to me is something that came to me today, and it's going to sound really strange because this is Saturday, but everybody talks about Good Friday and everybody talks about Resurrection Sunday. You have suffering and then you have the resurrection above that suffering. Yay, we're winners. But nobody ever thinks about the Saturday in between those two. The silent Saturday. Imagine what the disciples and the people that were close to Christ must have been feeling on Saturday. Are we crazy? We've been fa following this nut job around this whole time. The guy says he's going 
he's going to be Christ, and here he's dead. I mean, they killed him, so he can't be the dude, right? And even the Jewish people that were looking for a Messiah didn't recognize he was Messiah. Are they thinking, oh, shoot, <laughs> and we killed the wrong guy? I mean, <laughs> I mean, think about that silent Saturday, what must people have been feeling like? And the reason I think about that in practical form, even if you don't believe in religious stories and all of those things or the Bible, I do, you don't have to, that you have suffering that goes on in life. And then there's these quiet periods in your life where you really start to doubt yourself. Like, am I on the right road? Am I doing the right things? Have I messed myself up? Even people of faith, they go to church, right? And they sit in church and they feel like, well, am I really saved? Do I really know Christ? Have I done so many wrong things that now I can't get through? And the greatest story that I can tell that relates to this is my father. And this will bring me to my final point about what the real purpose of all of this is. And I know I'm going a little bit long, but I really felt in my spirit today that I wanted to say this. The people that have faith and believe in Christ we all go through these times where we have doubt. Are we good enough? Right? Are we too bad? And my father is a perfect example of that. My father lived his whole life. He was really a rough guy. He beat me and put me out on the street when I was 15. That sounds really sad, but it worked out okay. I'm doing just fine. But very close to the end of my father's life, he's only about a week away from living, I'm trying to get my dad to accept the Christ that he knows. He knows who Jesus is. Like, Dad, you're like, you're like a, a week from the finish line here, bro. <laughs> you <laughs> you got to make sure things are covered. And he said, I know who Jesus is, and I believe that he died for my sins, but I don't think I deserve it. My dad said, I have been so bad to you, and I have done so many things wrong in my life that I deserve to die. I deserve to be punished in hell, and so I can't accept it. And I said, Dad, if that's true, we're all doomed, man. I mean, we've all done very bad things in our life. It's a natural human state to sin and do things that are wrong. But that's the whole point of Easter. And it's in all of its Good Friday and resurrection, it's about grace. One simple word, grace. That simple phrase, grace is what sets all of us free from all of those things that we've ever done. You don't have to do anything to receive it, except to believe that it's real. Grace transcends your capacity to believe that it is true or right or real. doesn't matter if you believe in it. It's still there nonetheless. You can be a person that doesn't have any faith at all. I don't even believe in the Bible. I think you're a crazy man. But grace is still present there in your life as well. He's doing it for you too, even if you don't believe in it. Grace is what sets us apart. It's what brings us out of that place of suffering into a place of resurrection and freedom. So even in those times on Saturday when it's silent and you're doubting your faith, remember what I am saying to you today. Grace is sufficient for you. Grace is sufficient for you. It's all that is necessary. Some of you don't believe in the Holy Spirit. But the Holy <coughs> Spirit is real, and it transcends your capacity to know that he's here, to know that he's in you, or to feel that he's present, but he's always there. It's that little voice in your mind telling you, don't do that. Turn left instead of right. The Spirit of God connects all of us together. And grace and mercy is sufficient for everyone. You know what he asked us to do on Easter? I've given you grace. Now I want you to give grace. Be forgiving. Be loving. Be kind. That's what Easter means to me. That simple word of grace. No matter what all the Easter bunny can do for you, and I believe, and I love chocolate, <laughs> but grace is what Easter is really about, and it's sufficient for you. And I am honored to have you guys here and hear that. And I hope that you walk away today, no matter what you've believed about your life and the things that you may have done in the past, grace is sufficient for you. And you're free of all of that. So here's what I want you to do before I pray, because I'm going to pray a blessing over you. I want all of you to pretend like you have a little box. And I want you to open that box in your mind. 
And I want you to take everything you've ever done wrong, everything you've ever done that you hate yourself for, and I want you to put it in that box. I want you to close the lid on that box, and I want you to lock it and throw it away because it doesn't matter. All of it's behind you now. What matters is what you do from this day forward. That's what grace does. Sets it all aside like it never happened before. That's what Easter means to me. Okay? So with that, I'm going to pray, and uh, you guys can uh, get to eat, because I know that's probably what you want to do more than anything. So. All right, dear precious Heavenly Father, Lord, we come before you this day, and we thank you so much for your grace and your mercy. I can't articulate it the way that you put it in my mind, but I pray that every person that is in this house will receive it in the way that you gave it to me. That they'll never think of themselves in terms of what they've done, but they'll turn, think of themselves in terms of what you created them to do. And I pray that you will give everyone a measure of grace and mercy, that we will give grace and mercy to others. We ask you, Lord God, to bless this gathering. We ask you to bless this food and nourish our bodies. And we ask you, Father God, to bless all of our relatives that have gone on before us, Lord, Sharon and my wife Pam and my brother, Lord. There's so many people that are already up in heaven. And I know, Lord, that you're going to go right where they are and put your arms around them and let them be like they're here in our gathering and feel our love for them. We're so thankful for you, Lord. In your merciful name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right.